Hi there, Alex here at mixinglessons.com. In today's video, I've got another plugin recommendation for you, and it's another free plugin. It's called Span, and it's a frequency analyzer. And so what that allows you to do is it allows you to get visual feedback about the frequencies that are either going on in your mix or on an individual track or any element of your session that you want to apply this plugin to. It's a plugin that I would say I use in pretty much all of my mixes. I also use it when I'm mastering and it gives me all of the information that I need about the frequencies that are going on in my mix. And so I find it really, really useful. I think you'll find it really useful as well. And so I'm going to give you a brief overview and a brief introduction on some of the ways that you might like to use this plugin. Before we get started, as always, I've got three free guides that I think you'll find really, really useful if you record or mix music. I've got an EQ cheat sheet, a compression cheat sheet, and a vocal recording guide. And you can download all of those for free at mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads. And I'll leave the link to that in the description. Okay, so to start with, I'll show you some of the very basic parameters that you're probably gonna to wanna to be aware of in general to use this plugin. And then we'll have a look at some of the specific modes that this plugin has that I think you'll find really useful. So let's send some signal into this plugin. I'm gonna keep the sound turned down so that you can hear me talking over the top of it. But as you can see, what this gives us is a visual readout of the frequencies as they are occurring in this session. In this instance, this is a mastering session. So I have this plugin applied to the master fader and so this is telling me what's going on in the one song that I have loaded into this mastering session. And so this is giving me a visual readout of what the frequencies are doing as the song is playing. Now, a couple of kind of broad and general settings to be aware of. If you click this icon here, you can open up some of the settings. Some of the main ones to be aware of are the controls over what the lowest and highest frequencies are that this is showing us. So at the minute it's showing us everything from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. I tend not to change those settings too often because when we're mixing and mastering music, those are generally the frequencies that we are concerned with. But as you can see here, this song is going down further than 20 hertz. So you may like to go down a little bit lower and see how low this is going. You may also need to use the range low and range high parameters. If, for instance, you had something which was playing very quietly, then you could view what was going on at a lower decibel level or a higher decibel level. Now, there are a lot of other settings here. But rather than using these different settings, I tend to use the mode function as this gives you settings that are optimized for different tasks. And so we're going to have a look at those in a moment. Just to look at some of the other settings briefly before we do that, if you don't want to use the other information that this plugin gives you, the true peak information, for example, or the correlation meter and things like that, you can hide those by clicking here. And then this just becomes a frequency analyzer. And you'll see that you can also have two different frequency analyzers. So there's an A and a B. So you could have two different settings, one on A, one on B, and you could switch between the two. And that's something that we're going to make use of in a moment. So before we look at these different modes, let's think for a moment about why it might be useful to be able to see the frequencies that are going on in your session. Well, first and foremost, you might have a track and you want to perhaps diagnose a problem or you want to find out some specific information about the frequencies that that track, that instrument, whether it be a snare drum, a guitar, maybe it's a vocal track. You want to find out something specific about that instrument in terms of its frequencies. In that instance, you could apply this plugin directly to that track and you could see what the frequencies are doing. So maybe you have an acoustic guitar and it's got a certain frequency that's kind of ringing and you don't like the sound of it and you want to find out what that frequency is so that you can EQ it out. This would be a really useful way of finding that frequency. And so that's one thing that you can use a frequency analyzer for. And I do that from time to time if the need arises. But something that I use a frequency analyzer for a lot more commonly is to assess the frequency range of everything that's going on in a song. So I want to look at the overall frequency balance for my entire mix or the whole song if I'm mastering it. Now, if I'm mixing, what I'll do is 
generally once I'm getting towards the end of the mix, if things sound good to me, I'll then look at this frequency analyzer and see what that tells me. If I can see that there's a buildup of frequencies in a certain area, that gives me some information that I can then use to decide what to do with. So I could go to that particular range of frequencies and see if things would sound a little more balanced by turning some of that frequency range down on some of the instruments. Let's say that there's a bit of a buildup in the frequencies around the low mids. Well, potentially that could make the song sound a little bit muddy and so maybe I need to listen again and double check that that's not the case and that the song doesn't need some of those frequencies taking away in that area of the frequency spectrum. Conversely, let's say that there's a bit of a dip in that area. That could potentially indicate that the song might sound a little bit thin, for example. And so maybe I need to experiment with adding some frequency content in that area. Now obviously I'm not suggesting that you start mixing with your eyes rather than your ears and you think, right, it looks to me as if the frequency spectrum doesn't look right and therefore I'll change it. All you're really doing is you're looking and thinking, does this indicate anything that I might like to double check? So if the frequency analyzer tells you something, all it's doing is giving you the opportunity to investigate a little bit further. If you then think, no, this sounds right to me, I like the way that this sounds, then there's absolutely nothing to say that you should change it. It's simply informing you and giving you the opportunity to investigate a little bit further. Now, during the mastering process, once again, I want to make sure that the frequency spectrum is balanced. And I also want to make sure that that balance is not just on a track by track basis in terms of one tracks, highs, mids and lows. But I want to make sure that that balance occurs in all of the tracks across the album. So for each track on the album, I want it to have a balanced frequency response from song to song. So I don't want one song to be much brighter than the rest. I don't want one song to have a lot less low or low mids than the rest. I want all of the songs on an album to sound as if they belong together. I don't want some songs to sound as if they kind of don't fit in. So with that in mind, with the fact that I like to use a frequency spectrum analyzer to assess how balanced the frequencies are across a song, let's have a look at some of these different modes and how you might like to use this plugin. So personally, I like to go to mode and I like to select the master setting. And I like that whether I am mixing or mastering. I use that in both instances because essentially what I'm using this plugin for during mixing and mastering is essentially a similar role. And so you can see here, this is kind of indicating to me that there's a bit of a build up around 600 Hertz. And so that might be something that I might like to investigate. There's a bit of a dip in general between around 100, maybe up to around 400. There's maybe a bit of a bump here below 100. So using this master mode, it kind of smooths things out. It reacts a little bit slower. So if we just go back to the default setting, this is showing us lots of peaks. There's lots of sort of harmonic information here and it's responding very quickly to what's going on in the song. Now that's interesting, but it's maybe only so useful. Whereas here with the master setting, it shows me a bit more of an average. Things are changing a little bit more slowly and things are a little bit more smoothed out. And so you can kind of actually gain a lot of information from this. And I feel that this is a bit more of a useful mode for assessing the overall frequency balance of a song or of a mix. Now you'll notice here that this is actually showing us two spectrums. And so if we go to the settings here, you can have two spectrums giving you two different types of information. Personally, I don't find that particularly useful, so I tend to turn the second one off. But you'll remember I mentioned that you can have two different frequency spectrums here, A and B. So in B, we have our, well, we've used the mastering mode, but we've altered it slightly because we've turned the second frequency spectrum off. Here, we still have the original mode, the original settings. What I like to do on one of these two is here we have the mix overall, so it's the stereo mix. On the other spectrum analyzer, I like to go here, and when I'm mastering, I like to use the mid-side stereo option. So on one channel, we have the stereo option, so this is kind of just your stereo mix. But as you can see here, there are various different settings that you can choose from. And so on mastering, one of the things that I like to have access to is this mid-side option. 
And what that allows me to do is switch between the mid and what's going on in the sides. So part of mastering is that potentially when you EQ something, you may like to EQ the sides of your mix differently to what's going on in the center. And so this lets me see the frequencies that are happening on the sides of the mix, and then we can go over to what's going on in the center of the mix. Once again, I like to change the mode, and I like to choose Master, turn off the second spectrum, and then what you can do is if you place the mid channel as the main channel, you can use an underlay and select the side channel. So here, what this is telling us is everything that's going on in the center of the mix and what's going on at the sides of the mix. And so what this allows me to do is toggle between the stereo mix and then another version of things which shows me what's going on in the center of the mix and what's going on in the sides of the mix. And so that can be really useful to have access to whilst you're mastering, but generally when I'm mixing, I will just stick to the stereo option. Now, if I wanted to assess an individual track, whether it be a snare drum or a vocal track or whatever it may be, I would likely use the default setting, which is more detailed, it responds quicker, and this can tell us very specific information about what's going on on an individual track. But otherwise, for mixing, I like the master mode with the stereo setting, and when I'm mastering, I like to use a combination of the master mode in the stereo setting, and on the second screen, I like to have the master mode with the mid side setting and I use the underlay so that I can see the side and the mid on the same screen. And so I find this a really, really useful plugin. As I say, it's completely free and it's a great way of getting a visual insight into the frequencies that are going on in your mix. And as I say, you shouldn't then base your decisions on what you can see in your mix but this is an opportunity to gain a bit more of an insight and then you can choose what to do with that information based on what you think sounds best. So I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget to get that free EQ cheat sheet, that free compression cheat sheet and that free vocal recording guide at mixinglessons.com slash free downloads. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.